that. This is a um, piece of work that I did with some colleagues, uh, actually all based in Europe, but um, it was the outcome. That, that works for me, thank you. Um, Sorry? Tina, I think it was. Oh, somebody's having a chat. <laughs> um, so, so this was the, the outcome of, of, well, it was initiated at a, um, a meeting two years ago now, um, uh, which was around, the meeting was around metadata standardization, but the, uh, you know, one of the discoveries, or, or it's not that surprising, is that um, alongside or underneath um, metadata standards, you uh, almost always find that you have a set of, of terminologies or code lists or vocabularies that are needed to uh, provide the, the data that goes into the fields in the metadata record. Um, and that's, you know, there's, 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 there's a rich history, particularly in the sciences, of uh, developing vocabularies, um, but sort of too many of them um, reside in, in not very useful or not very so interoperable places like in in books or or in appendices to books or sometimes just in uh, in graphics um, even organizations that you would imagine ought to have their act together like the International Bureau of Weights and Measures um, you know publishes the SI in essentially what comes down to as, as, as a book uh, they uh, they refer to it as the handbook, the SI handbook. It's it's and yes, it's on the web, but it's but it's just web pages. Um, and so we this this piece of work we we basically looked at um, what we would want to do to make these kinds of leg what we referred to as legacy vocabularies. That's vocabularies which are presented in the kind of traditional way. Um, make them more useful in a, in a distributed um, web-centric context. And we refer to that as a fair vocabulary, um, sort of using the terminology of, of uh, findable, accessible, um, interoperable, uh, usable. I've got another um, image that I wanted to use for that, which means I'm going to have to swap. The screen that I'm sharing, and I'll share another one briefly. Um, so, so, so this um, this table is a sort of um, an interpretation. It's not a very strict interpretation, but it's a, an interpretation in principle of how you would apply the fair principles, or at least the fair letters. Um, to um, publishing a vocabulary. And, you know, we can go through those, but, you know, to make it um, findable, it must be um, available from at least one repository recognized by a community, and that it's possible to search for a term or vocabulary and get the identifier for it. So this is a kind of linked data viewpoint where we're focusing very strongly around the idea that every item in a vocabulary should have a web identifier and the vocabulary as a whole should have a web identifier at the top. Then accessibility is addressed by saying, all right, when you dereference that identifier, make sure to get something useful. Um, the interoperability is addressed by um, saying, well, the, to, to be useful, the representation must conform to some standard. Um, and um, it also, um, to make it maximally interoperable, will include mapping relations to other vocabularies. Finally, the reusability is managed through the licensing uh, metadata um, and um, the def definitions being sufficient. So, Hopping back to my other um, screen again. See, I'm reusing existing material, but just to motivate us. Um, we have plenty of precedents of fair vocabularies. Um, 
some of which are hosted in um, services. Uh, we, we've got some which we host. AIDC has uh, Research Recoveries Australia, um, and they host uh, you know hundreds of vocabularies, uh, which uh, in a form which which satisfies pretty much all of those criteria which I just went through as to um, how we think of vocabularies in the context of care. And so this paper that we wrote was basically a kind of almost a step by step, but it can't be totally step by step because each vocabulary has got slightly different requirements, but a set of um, concerns that need to be addressed in order to make a legacy, turn of a legacy vocabulary something that you might, might call, call fair. And, um, you know, in contrast to some earlier work or, or parallel work that has been done, particularly coming out of Europe, which has focused very, very much on the technology um, side of it, um, with uh, you know, national ontologies and these kinds of things. You know, we buried almost all of that in item number six, and everything else around this set of rules is almost all around sort of social processes, um, getting agreements. Um, dealing with the vocabulary owners and custodians, um, worrying about the licensing arrangements, um, taking care of persistence of the um, of, of, of the of the identifiers, um, and finally making sure that you recognise that um, when you've published your fair vocabulary, you have to maintain it. And that maintenance. Um, uh, is in a couple of directions. One is making sure it, it stays alive, and the other is making sure it stays up to date. So that's a kind of yes, Nick. You you know threw down the gauntlet and said you know suck us with some theory, Simon. So so that's that's kind of what we did. You know, with all when we were pulling together these rules, however, I would sort of emphasise that it was based on experience. Um, and you know a particularly rich experience, or a couple of experiences that that, that I had in, in designing the way we did these rules. One was the vocabularies from the Australian Soil Land Survey Field Handbook, which is one of these classic um, legacy vocabularies where the the reference version is at, is is in is in print uh, form in a book, uh, and we have most of these terminologies out of this field handbook available um, in a fair way. Currently uh, largely published um, through CSIRO, but we carefully made sure that the reference URIs aren't CSIRO ones. So they could be this whole vocabulary could easily be rehomed in Research for Cameras Australia, for example, and that'll be the direction we plan to go. Um, um, and uh, you know, there's a bit of a checklist here about how we satisfied those uh, those those ten simple rules. And another one which I've been working on over years was um, uh, turning the geological time scale, which the classic version of which is published as this coloured picture, um, into something which is sort of fully um, fair and um, uh, linked data semantic uh, web technology stack. Um, so that so that it's uh, broadly accessible. Now the process in the middle there of creating the machine rep readable representations, in other words, turning something which may be tabulated on a page into something which is in SCOS or RDF or OWL or JSON or whatever. Um, we we did talk about that a little bit in the paper, but um, there's there's a number of different pathways. Um, so, and you have to sort of recognize and, and, the, and the tooling around that, there's a number of different tool sets which are already available. Uh, Nick's been working on some of those. So, so, so rolling up the sleeves and turning that, that theory into reality might be something that, that needs to pick up with. Hand over the screen. Okay, Rowan, do you want to say any things or do you want me to just get, go ahead? No, oh, please, please go ahead. Nick. Okay, um, so like Simon, uh, I, I have done a little bit of work on persistence of things and whatnot. And in fact, I'm, let me share my screen and you'll see. Um, 
this is a mini mini sideline but it's related okay so my screen should be coming up now so there's a paper here from a few years ago the challenges of ensuring persistency of identifier systems in the world of ever-changing technology so this is this is the persistence of the identifier system to ensure the persistence of the identifiers that the system manages and it's relevant to both cabs and all these other things and this is a paper that um i and a couple other csiro at the time people published um and so, so this is the this paper is somewhat similar to the ten rules for vocabularies, but for identifiers, and it says you should manage the governance of the system as well as the identifiers themselves, and so on. So that's just a, a thing there that this kind of work sort of goes on and on and on. But um, where I wanted to go on top of what Simon's just presented is just some of the things that we're doing with actual uh, technical and and specific arrangements for vocabulary publication. Um, and I've mentioned these many times before in this forum, but I'll, I'll show you all a couple of things which will hopefully paint the, the picture as to where we're up to. So um, a little while ago, a few months ago, um, we did some work for Geoscience Australia based on this workflow. And what this workflow is, is it's, a, it's a, a vocabulary creation and publication workflow. We don't need to consider all the details, but essentially there are, there are several ways in which vocabularies might be created inside Geoscience Australia. You can take a, you can, there might be an expert there who can type out by hand a vocabulary, a semantic vocabulary file, or they might use a tool to, to make the vocabulary. There's a whole bunch of different ways. It might come from out of a database, but um, we have a couple of instances of organizations that have pretty good vocabulary review and release procedures. So however you actually make the vocab, you then go through this review and release procedure and then once you've kind of agreed to release this vocabulary, you then want to go into what we think of as best practice or, or pretty good publication. So what does that look like? So this workflow has got elements within it that try and do as many of these things as that we, we think need to be done with as less, as little effort as possible from the doers of it. So for instance, um, if we look at, and I'm going to just, I'm, I'm using ex uh, specific examples here. Um, let's look at the, vocabularies uh, as managed by the geological survey of queensland now these vocabularies are um scoffs vocabularies and, and we can see the system there in a second but geological survey of queensland uh, you can manage graphs inside graphs and graph systems and graph databases and so on but actually managing vocabularies in in terms of an organization managing a set of anything the fact that they're semantic is exciting but um but managing them as a series of documents and so on, the geological survey is quite able to manage collections of files in a version control system. So this system that you're seeing here, it has a collection of vocabularies in it. There's 80 or something in here. That's them all there. But it also has user acceptance testing vocabularies, which are not exactly the same set. It's also got um, access control rules about this repository, who is able to actually put certain content in what place. It's got uh roles assigned to the people to do that it's got automated tooling around this so that when certain actions are performed other things automatically happen um so this is actually the management system for the vocabularies it's just ordinary old github it's used for lots of stuff um and and as far as we can tell it's working just fine for the geological surveys vocabularies um so the reason of, about going on about this is that we have very interesting content we have all these different ways that it might be produced but the actual authoritative version containment and release system is just ordinary old github and and this is part of the magic because so by the magic this is a this is a partly able because the vocabularies we deal with at the end of the day can be represented as text files they we might want them in a system but nevertheless we, we can have them so we can manage them like any other version controlled text file so this is just um from experience you know we've tried to manage vocabularies in specialized vocabulary management systems um, but actually, we have a couple of examples of organizations that have no problem managing them here. Now, a, a counter example is the um, British Oceanographic Data Center. They manage several hundred vocabularies in a Oracle database system, and they have procedures and roles and access and release and so on all around that. But again, their content is managed in a non-semantic web, non-vocabulary specialized system it's just a oracle database 
and and then it's it's used as semantic vocabulary somewhere else. But um, yeah, very standard tooling. So that's that's kind of one thing. So on this kind of this workflow of creation of vocabularies and management and release and publication, the management bit, ordinary systems. When we look at the actual uh, how to best publish the vocabularies, it, it's not okay just to leave them. I think in a in a folder in GitHub and say they're all our vocabularies. And a lot of places have done this. They just said here are our vocabularies, you know, and and we might have tooling that uses this elsewhere. And if you want to use our vocabularies, here they are. But because of the kind of machine readable and human readable possibilities of semantic web stuff, I don't think I think we could do much better than this. So this particular set of vocabs comes out in the geological surveys vocab delivery tool. So here's the tool here. Here are those same vocabularies. And, you know, we can look inside them and, and we can browse them and so on. That's all fine. Uh, but this tool is entirely slave to that GitHub repository. It doesn't do any management and it doesn't do any version control or anything. It just represents the content. As you saw before in that GitHub repository. So that's that aspect. Now, back to that workflow. So I, I won't go through all the details, but essentially there's one big block about creation and we haven't talked about the creation tools yet much but you create vocabs in, a, in several ways you get them into wherever it's gone you get them into this uh i'm gonna click through my link sorry simon sorry are you simon. asking me to make my comment you, you raised a hand so i did raise a hand yeah that was just just uh you know, it's interesting what you said, Nick, saying uh, they're perfectly capable of managing their content in a version control system. Um, and then you've, you know, since then we've been looking at the web interface to, to GitHub. Uh, you know, I work with this every day, um, but I'm a little bit interested to know if the rest of the audience here, if if they can, if, if those things join together as smoothly as we're assuming that's a good point yeah and and i should say even before anyone else jumps in to answer that that the geological survey couldn't use github until the vocabulary project came along in fact they had never used version control systems and the vocabulary system was actually the first system that they now use github for lots of stuff but they had not used um, version control for anything until i came along three years ago and said well you're gonna have to manage all this content why don't you do this they've since used it for you know images documents soft software all kinds of stuff but it, that actually this system was the first one and um but yeah please if anybody else because yeah, because you know starting as if you like from an engineering viewpoint it's 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 sort of um sometimes horrifying to imagine people aren't um storing stuff in a version control system and 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 in the cloud and backed up and that but um that may be a strong assumption which isn't shared everywhere um we know it's not i mean we know the next the next unit that we want to work with the geological survey of wa they have no such management yeah. systems in place yet yeah yeah that's that, that's absolutely true that's yeah. that's I, I could comment um nick and simon if that's all right as sure. a coming as a, as a scientist <laughs> ecologist that has it hadn't used version control at all um so working with vocabularies has been an opportunity to get into it and I really marvel at the um, you know what it can do you know your ac you know your access controls your you know rights responsibilities whatever you're assigning but the ability to work with people instead of sending um, excel files backwards and forwards was just like oh my god <laughs> this is so much better there's just too much risk in um, you know having things stored where you've got them stored locally, um, even backed up to a server, didn't make me feel comfortable. You like them in, um, and n knowing whether or not you're working on the right version. So it's been a real le learning curve for me, but it's do it's doable. There's plenty of resourcing on the web there to um, get a yeah, handle yeah. of um, GitHub, particularly the um, pushing, you know, um, working with Git and being able to push up um, the files is something I need to keep working on. But so it's a learning curve for domain experts, I guess, if you're expecting domain experts to manage their vocabularies in this way. But I think it's, it, 
certainly and, doable and, with and I think what time Nick's and YouTube also, lessons. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think I think what Nick's um, you know quite nicely um, uh, illustrating to us is you know on the one hand you've got if you like the point of truth which is these files in the version control system, but then the access method you need to make easier. <laughs> Um, and and the fact that he can tell us that behind the scenes this is completely synced up with the point of truth is 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 a necessary condition. But um, you know, I mean, frankly, this interface that Nick's showing us at the moment is is way way better than what you would find if you opened one of those files. But it's still pretty geeky. <laughs> Um, and and you know for 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 normal users we need to be looking beyond this kind of view to something which is is really as much as possible would resemble the things that they have printed in their books at the moment. Um, just uh, just one other thought on the version control. So I'm not sure if everyone on this call is aware, but the the version control system that's used for GitHub, so Git. Um, I mean, the origins of that system were the Linux foundation. So the people who actually build the Linux kernel, you know, the operating system kernel, they they were unhappy with version control systems. So they went and wrote their own one. And now the world kind of uses it. But, you know, the way they use it is like orders of magnitude more complex than the way we use it. You know, they use it to integrate and, and do all the stuff with software. And so managing files in the way that we are, text files that have changes, tracked changes is 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 you know, breakfast work for Git. I mean, it really, it's no problem for that system. So that's why we find it easy. However, it's still, Git still uses a a, um, a difference mechanism that's not 100% native to the way our semantic stuff works. So it can, it can very carefully tell you what characters changed in lines and what lines changed over time. It's very good at that. Uh, but it doesn't do very nice jobs where, say someone takes a vocabulary and they've made a, an isomorphic change, or what I mean is a change that it doesn't actually affect the content and the and so on, but it, it affects the way the the content is printed out in the file. But it doesn't affect. It wouldn't affect the display that you see here, but it does affect the source control file. That would look like a completely different version, but the content hasn't actually changed. For that kind of version control change, you really do have to look into specialized graph tools for that to work out that this graph is actually isomorphic to that graph. That's out of scope kind of here. And I, and I haven't yet come across an organization that other than my own that cares enough about differing vocabs to, to do that. But it's possible that yes, you could have two vocabs that in version control look completely different, but are actually the same. And you could have, for instance, two formats of the same vocab, it's the same vocab, but in two formats, you know, all of those problems, what do you do about those? There are version control tools for semantic graphs, but I found that yes, let's get everyone up to using good version control and point of truth storage and all that sort of stuff well before we worry about graph diffing issues. <laughs> that's uh, it's a maturity thing, uh, organisation maturity thing. Um, okay, so that's the vocab. So we've got the vocabs in the version control system under normal version control or an Oracle database or whatever the organisation is wanting to use, and. Um, and now we want to do stuff with the vocabs. We want to publish them, and also we want to, in general, um, you know, find other vocabs for use and so on. So I'm going to show you a quote that, as in a kind of project quote that um, my company's done recently for the Geological Survey of Western Australia. I'm just seeing if I can. Not sure I know how to zoom in. Don't think I can zoom in. Uh, Maybe I can hang on. There we go. Okay. So what this quote says is there's a bunch of vocabulary publication tools out there. Some of them are these one organizational tools like the Geological Survey of Queensland, but there's also Research Vocabularies Australia, which Simon's mentioned, which is an aggregator. And what this contract says is let's build a couple of extensions to the search mechanisms in our vocabulary publication tool so that we can use that tool also as a cross system searching thing. And the reason we would do this is that if I'm an organization and I've published a bunch of vocabs and I want to publish another one tomorrow, optimally I would, semantic web optimally, I would reuse terms from elsewhere. I wouldn't just slavishly implement them all from scratch. So um, there's a search functionality in these tools where if I search for the word coal, it'll find me all of the vocabs or all of the terms within vocabs 
within this organization of vocabs that have coal in it in a particular way. But I, I generally don't just want to do that. I, I want to search across all of the vocabularies out there. Now, RVA has done a good job of aggregating seven, you know, many hundreds of vocabs, and I can search across all of them. But what if I want to search across my collection of vocabs and that one and RVA and another one? How do I do that? Um, so the contract extension that or the, the contract that we're working on um, is an extension to the publication tool to allow for cross system searching. And I think I've got a picture here. These are obviously wireframes. We haven't built this yet, but um, instead of just searching for a term on a vocab, we would now search for a term and say, which systems do we want to search across? And we could choose. Um, and the results would come back something like this, rather than what I've just shown you, where they'd come back and it would say, oh, I can see coal in this vocab, and I can see coal in this other vocab, and this vocab's at some other organization. Now, this kind of multi-search interface thing, multi-system search thing, rather, um, there have been several attempts in the community that I'm aware of to do this sort of thing, but it's really difficult because of the way people constitute the vocabularies. They can be quite different and searches, you know, do and don't work and all this sort of stuff. So in terms of publication and management, I think we have to start with a fairly strict regime of different organizations publishing vocabs in a particular way and show that search works across those and then over time loosen how you may represent your vocabularies. But we have to from a multi-organization point of view, if we want search to work across those and we want absorption and reuse of vocabularies, we have to be very, very strict about how we constitute our vocabs. The temptation here is that because of the semantic web's way of being able to do, quote, anything, uh, you might have very, very different styles of vocabs. That just makes the, the tool making task basically impossible. Um, if we don't have very strong guarantees about what a vocabulary looks like, not the content, but you know how it's structured, we really can't operate. So, so this is the forefront of where we're up to is making Cross system search and where does this go to the management and publication? Well, if I want to make a vocab tomorrow, the best thing I could do would be to ensure that I'm either directly reusing existing vocabs that are in the space or choosing not to use them and stating why to, you know, put the terms that I want in there and position them according to the, the other set of terms out there. And then once I've done all that stuff, back to that workflow thing, the last few things I want to do is I want to publish the vocabulary in my system and or publish the vocabulary in an aggregated system. So the last bit of this contract is to ensure that any vocab that's published in this way, so you see this, you know, this is the Warhol purpose vocabulary. When this is published here by the Geological Survey of Queensland, um, unless they say otherwise, there'll be an automatic thing to go and also publish or update this vocabulary at the Research Vocabularies Australia. So we, we treat the Research Vocabularies Australia as a national aggregator, and we sort of on publish there. And if this also may occur elsewhere internationally. We might say that this organization publishes its point of truth vocabulary here. It sends a copy over to Research Vocabularies Australia or a reference. So it says, I'm not going to send you a copy, but I'm telling you that I've got a vocab that you might be interested in. And it might also contribute this vocabulary to some international set of vocabularies. So back to what I said at the beginning of this, we're trying to do as many of these things sort of behind the scenes as possible so that as an organization that actually creates and publishes vocabs, essentially you, you have your ways of creating them, you have your ways of managing your vocabs, and then you, as much as, as possible from there, it's all automated. You create it, you do your curation, you publish it, you go publish, and then all of these things, you know, best case, is that you're publishing here and listing there and everywhere that all sort of happens automatically and uh, we're trying to do as much automated tooling as we can research vocabulary australia has an interface that allows us to interact with it automatically um, and so we know that this kind of pushing of content will work we've tested that out already so so this is where we're up to it's 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 um how many of the the points of simon's paper will it tick off a few of them i mean it'll 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 do some of the sort of fair formats and this and that and the next thing, there is um, no guarantee that what we're doing will, you know, ensure long-term governance of an organization's vocabs. It will certainly allow them to be listed in certain places. We can assign identifiers like this one to them under certain regimes that are very good identifiers. But, you know, if the organization that actually owns this thing loses interest in maintaining this, then this will crumble. But we are dealing with organizations, at least a few of them have been around for 100 plus years, and they've been curating and delivering content for a long time. So 
there's a good chance, I think, that the geological surveys and elsewhere will, when up and running, continue to deliver vocab content for a very long time. So that's my view of this stuff. It's, and, and part of the discussion here is to um, ensure that other people's views, you know, do they use Git or not, or do they have fundamentally different ways of viewing vocabularies and, and publications on? Some of those come in because otherwise it's, um, you know, well, I'm interested to learn what other people do, I suppose, <laughs> as, a, as, a, you know, as well as saying that obviously what I'm doing can't be the only way to do it. Okay, I'll uh, see if I can stop sharing my.